Hello friends, this is Priyanka. Today we are going to solve a problem on analogous electric circuit from a given mechanical system. In this video, I will give you some important tips regarding how to draw analogous electric circuit with the help of differential equations in case of force voltage analogy. Let us first understand what is the given mechanical system. Now in this system there are two masses and for these masses there is no any friction with the floor. Then this mass M1 is getting connected with this spring K1 and damper with viscous friction coefficient B1. M1 is having displacement X1. Now in between M1 and M2 there is spring K2 and here damper with viscous friction coefficient B2. Force F of T is applied on this mass M2 and this mass M2 is having displacement X2. Let us first draw free body diagram. Now if we observe this system applied force F of T is on mass M2. So we will first take the free body diagram for this mass M2. Now force is applied towards the right hand side direction and the displacement x2 is in the same direction. So we have to show this first. Then which elements are responsible for the reaction forces? Now if we observe this mass M2 then there is the inertia due to this mass M2. Then the spring with stiffness K2 is also responsible for the reaction force and damper with viscous friction coefficient B2 because these elements are connected to mass M2. So we have to show these reaction forces in the opposite direction of the action force. So I will show that. So inertia force due to mass M2 I will say Fm2 then reaction force due to spring K2 that is I will say Fk2 and reaction force due to this B2 I will say Fb2. Now according to Newton's second law of motion applied force is equal to sum of reaction forces. So I have to take this applied force that is F of T is equal to sum of reaction forces that is Fm2 plus Fb2 plus Fk2. Now if we observe input is the applied force F of T but output is in terms of displacement X1 and X2. So we have to define all these forces in terms of displacement. So how to define? So I will write there force F of T is equal to. Now how we can say that uh, inertia force due to mass M2 in terms of displacement. So M D square X by DT square. Then reaction force which for the spring with stiffness K1 
the action falls for the damper with viscous friction coefficient b1 then the action force for the spring with stiffness k2 and reaction force for this damper with viscous friction coefficient v2. So we have to show all these reaction forces. Now if we observe this k2 and v2 is on this right hand side face. So I have to show here. So f k2 f b2. Now on this face there is k1 and b1. So I will show. That is F K one, then F B one, and inertia force due to mass M one. That is F M one. So this is the free body diagram. Now according to Newton's second law of motion, sum of all reaction forces is equal to zero. So I have to take all the forces which is equal to zero. So I will take first F M two plus F B one. Plus F B two plus F K one plus F K two is equal to zero. Now we have to define all these forces in terms of displacement. So how to define the inertia force? So it is for the mass M one. So the here is M one. So how to define that? That is M one d square x one by d t square. Plus because here displacement is x one, f b one. Now b one is connected to only m one, so I will write here b one d x one by d t plus now b two. So b two is in between m one and m two. So we have to take the difference. So while taking difference, we have to take x one first because this is the free body diagram of m one. So I will write b two d x one by d t minus d x two by d t. Plus F K one, so K one is connected to only M one, so I will write K one X one plus K two. Now K two is in between M one and M two, so I have to take the difference of this displacement. So I will take here the X two first because this is the free X one first because this is the free body diagram of M one. So I will write here K two in the bracket X one minus X two. Which is equal to zero. So this is the differential equation. So I will write here the equation number two. Now we will understand how to apply force voltage analogy. So for that we will consider our LC series circuit where voltage is the input. Now if we observe here is the voltage that is V of T is input and resistor. Inductor and capacitor all are connected in series. So we know that when all the elements are connected in series, then the current flowing through is through that is same. That is equal to I of T. So this voltage V and this current I both are variable function with respect to time T. How we can define this uh, current I? That is the rate of change of charge. That is charge is nothing but Q. So we can define here I of T is equal to d Q by d T. Now we will write one equation in terms of Q. So here input is voltage V, and we will write this R L C all these elements in terms of Q. So how we can write here? That is V of T is equal to L d square Q by d T square plus R d Q by d T plus Q by C. So this is the differential equation. Now in mechanical system, we are spring mass and damper system. How we can write the equation? We are the applied forces F of t. So we know that equation that is F of t is equal to m d square x by d t square plus b d x by d t plus k x. Now we will compare these two equations. Now question is that we have to apply force voltage analogy. We have applied in mechanical system input is F of t that is force and in electrical system voltage is the input. So we can say that here F of t is analogous with V of t. Then again we will compare all the remaining elements. So M is analogous with L. Then B is analogous with R. 
K is analogous with 1 by C. Now what about the displacement X? So if we compare X is analogous with charge Q. But while we are going to apply force voltage analogy, we have to write all the term in, in, in the form of current I. So we will define this Q in terms of I. So I will write here X is analogous with Q. But this Q we have to write in terms of current. Now if we observe current is nothing but dQ by d. So if I take both side integration then this integration and this de uh, de differentiation is getting cancelled and Q is equal to integration of I. So I will say that Q is equal to integration of I dt. Then what about dx by dt? So dx by dt is nothing but it is analogous to dq by dt and dq by dt is equal to i. So we have to take dx by dt is equal to i in the equation. Then d square x by dt square. So d square x by dt square is analogous to di by dt. From this analogy element, we come to know that we have to take x is equal to integration of i dt, dx by dt is equal to i and d square x by dt square is equal to di by dt. Now while writing actual differential equation, we have to take consideration the suffix. That is, for example, this is the first differential equation. So instead of f of t, I will write v of t is equal to m2. So here suffix is 2. So I have to take here l2. d square x2 by dt square. So d square x2. So d square x2 by dt square means di2 by dt because for suffix 2 I have to write di2 by dt plus b2. So for this b2 I will take r2 dx2 by dt that is d dx that is for that I will take i that is i2 minus dx1 by dt that is i1 plus instead of k2 I will take 1 by c2 and for x2 I will take integration of I have to take integration of I will take common integration that is for x2 I will take i2 minus i1 bracket complete dt. So this is the differential equation and from this equation we have to draw the electrical network. So how to draw the electrical network? So for that we will observe the coefficients. Now coefficient of this L2 is nothing but I2. Then coefficient of this C2 and R2 is nothing but uh, I1 and I2. So we can say that L2 is along I2 that is uh, through this inductor L2 current I2 is flowing and for this R2 and C2 that is for this resistor R2 and for this capacitor C2 the current I1 and I2 is flowing that is it is in between current I1 and I2 so here is also I have to write current I1 and I2 so this is that we have to know that or this is the rough work it is this is the important note while drawing the electrical network now we will move for the next differential equation now in the same way i will write here instead of m1 i will take l1 d square x1 so x1 is nothing but i1 so d square x1 i will take di1 by dt plus b2 i will take b1 so b1 is nothing but r1 now dx1 that is i will take i1 r1 i1 plus b2 so b2 is nothing but r2 then again here i1 minus i2 plus k1 x1 so for this k1 i will take 1 by c1 and for this x1 i will take integration of i1 dt plus k2 so k2 is nothing but 1 by c2 so i will take here 1 by c2 i will take integration of the common uh, in the bracket x1 minus x2 that is i1 minus i2 
bracket complete dt is equal to 0. So this is the second differential equation. Now again we will observe the elements. Now along this L1 there is current I1 that is flowing. So we can say that for this L1 there is only current I1. Then for this R1 also there is only current I1 is flowing. Now for this R2 there is current I1 and I2. I1 and I2. Then for this C1 there is only current I1. And for this C2 there is two currents that is I1 and I2. Both the currents are flowing. So these are the important elements while drawing the electrical network. Now I will draw analogous electric circuit for the differential equation 1. So from this differential equation 1 we come to know that input voltage V of T is given and there is the inductor L2 which is having current I2 and resistor R2 and capacitor C2 is in between the current I1 and I2. So we will consider here two loops which are parallel to each other and which carries the current I1 and I2. So first I will say that in the second loop there is voltage V of T is given. So we have to show this voltage V of T for the second loop. Why second loop? Because here the all the terms are in term having the suffix 2. So I will say that here inductor L2 we have to show. Now these are the two loops that we have to take first which is having current I1 and I2. So for this L2 I will show that here in this loop there is current I2 is flowing and in this loop there is current I1 is flowing. Now according to differential equation we can say that for this L2 current I2 is flowing and then for this R2 and C2 it is in between both currents I1 and I2. So we have to show these two elements that is R2 and C2 in series because both are having same current so I will show here that is R2 and C2 so here is R2 and here is C2 then we will move for the next so for the next differential equation if we observe there is the L1 that is inductor L1 is having current I1 only then resistor R1 is having I1 only and capacitor C1 is having current I1 only. So these three elements are having same current I1 is flowing. So we have to show that these elements in series. So I will show instead of separate electrical connection I will show here because in this loop current I1 is flowing. So I will extend this loop. Now we have to take these three elements L1, R1 and C1. So I will take here first R1 then here is L1 and C1. These are in series because current I1 is flowing all these three elements. That is same current I1 is flowing. And Again there is R2 and C2. Now this R2 and C2 is having both the currents I1 and I2. That means we can say that in between these two parallel loops we have to show this uh, resistor R2 and capacitor C2. So this is the analogous electric circuit for the given mechanical system.